Welcome back to my tutorial series on modeling, now animating, a uh, clock in Maya. Before we get started, I'm going to hide the piece of glass which covers our clock face. I will select it and go to Display, Hide, Hide Selection. Now that that's done, we can get quicker access to our clock's hands. Which are the objects we are going to be animating? Um, we'll be animating using a very simple expression, nothing too complicated about it. Um, the expression will basically go as this. Um, if this goes around once, we would want to rotate our minute hand 6 degrees or 1 sixth, one sixtieth of the complete rotation of our second hand. And the same, well, similar expression goes for our hour hand, whereas if our minute hand goes all the way around, after 3600 revolutions of our second hand, we would want our hour hand to move one twelfth of that, which would be 30 degrees. Pretty simple. I uh, will just undo it. And now we'll be creating the expression. Um, one thing I do want to mention, actually, is you've probably fam you're probably familiar with the technique of creating expressions. Open up the attributes editor right-click on a property, create new expression, then type in your expression here. Um, we're not going to do ours that way. The reason for that is this creates a whole bunch of modules, or nodes would be the correct name, and each node would contain its own expression. We just want to create one node with all of the expressions inside them. To do that, we're going to Window, Animation Editor, Expression Editor. Now that we're in here, we're going to go to Select Filter and set it by name, I mean by expression name. And then give our expression a name. We will call it Clock. Now it's time to start writing our expression. This is really easy to do and mostly you should be able to just follow along. So the first expression we want to create is our Our Hands expression. So we say Our Hand and the attribute we want to control is its rotation around the z-axis. So we type in period rotate and make sure you do capital Z otherwise Maya will return an error and we want it to equal minute hand its attribute would be rotate z And since we want to have our minute hand, I mean our hour hand, move equivalent of one, I mean, a twelfth of the amount of our minute hand, I think I said that right, um, our hand wants to rotate one twelfth of the um, rotation of our minute hand, we should divide it by twelve. And that's the expression. Very simple. Note that I ended it with this symbol and click create. So now it's time to create our second expression which states our minute hands rotation this is also why it's very important to name objects makes it very easy to write expressions so we just said minute hands the attribute we're talking about is rotate z equals our second hands rotate Z, just as in our last line. Only this one will want to divide by 60 because it moves 1 60th of 360 degrees, which is 1 degree, each time our second hand goes all the way around. So let's take a look at what our expressions just did. You will have to click the edit button again to save that second line of code. So now when we rotate our second hand, rotates our minute hand and if we rotate the second hand enough times you can probably see by now it's rotating our hour hand so right now our expression is pretty simple but we're going to make it a bit more complex because we want it to be able we want to be able to enter a time 
and our clock will display that time. So we're going to create a new variable. A variable stores a number and the variable will be called um, clock time and it will be a float variable. Now a float variable basically means that that variable can store decimal points while as say an integer variable could not store a decimal point. So I'll type in float then we enter the variable name. Remember that variable name should be um, preceded by a mm, dollar sign. That dollar sign tells Maya it's a variable. So we call it clock time. Click edit. Make sure all is well. And we want to find out we want, we want to give our clock time a uh, time. So we'll type in clock time equals, let's give it a time of day, say 2 o'clock. Click edit, still saying result clock. That means there are no errors in your expression. So the next thing we need to do now is figure out how many times we need to rotate our second hand to make this clock display. 2 o'clock, because you got to remember the second hand controls all of the other hands. If we rotate the second hand enough times, it should set the time of the clock. So, we would say how many seconds are in an hour? Okay, that's 3, that's 3,600 or 3,600, and we need to multiply that by our value, which is stored inside our variable clock time. So, what we'll do is say clock time don't forget the dollar sign, equals clock time. We can do this. We can say clock time equals clock time. But we're going to, we're going to say it equals clock time times how many seconds are in an hour. So two hours, we've multiplied that by 3,600. 3, Click edit. All is still well. But the next thing we need to do now, so now we know how many seconds there are, we need to know how much we need to tell Maya in degrees how much to move the clock hand. So for each second, we need to move the second hand six degrees. And that's very easy to write. We simply do clock time again equals, because this clock time variable now stores the result of this expression, and we want it to equal clock time, once again, times 6. But not just 6, it needs to be times negative 6. Now the reason for that is, if we were to do this normally, our clock hands will rotate counterclockwise. We want our clock hands to rotate clockwise, so we need to make it the values negative, so instead of going this way, they will go the correct way. That's why it's negative 6. Click edit. And last but not least, we say our second hands. Rotate Z. Equals current, I mean our clock time. And click edit. Um, you should notice your clock won't do anything. Um, go down to your animation timeline and scrub it just a bit. The reason for that is for each frame Maya evaluate each time Maya changes frames, say from frame one to frame two, it will reevaluate this expression and therefore post the results in the attribute we want, which in this case would be second hands rotate Z. So now, after we scrubbed our animation, forcing Maya to reevaluate this, we see that our clock equals two o'clock. Just to prove that this works, we'll set another time, like say 8 o'clock. We scrub the animation, get it to update. There we go. So that's the basis of our clock's animation. In the next part, we will cover actually moving it, so when we play our animation, our clock hand will tick off the seconds. Thanks for watching this tutorial.